you find Mabel? No, Chief. She isn't forward. The cook hasn't seen her since you smuggled her on here. Maybe she fell overboard. We've looked everywhere except in the skipper's cabin. Maybe she went in there. Oh. I think I can guess who brought you aboard. Why should you want to get mixed up with a guy like Hogan? She's in his berth. See what it got you into? A trip with a whole load of mugs. What's that? You don't remember, Hogan. Well, don't look now, but that's him listening at the porthole. Can't you guys find something to do besides stay there and grin? Break out them swamps. Get the scrub. Shake it! That's one thing I ought to warn you about, his temper. Now, if you and he are... Come. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't think she'd get in here. She eats everything in my cabin, and then she runs away. Well, I'll put a stop to that. What's that gadget? That's a harness and leech. I'm going to break her to lead. Well, no wonder you have no success with your women. You treat them like dogs. Come. What is it, Quartermaster? Radio message, sir. Thanks. Yes, sir. We're ordered to report back to the base. The base? I bet it's your promotion. You'll be put in permanent command. Let me be the first to congratulate you. Thanks. I guess that's what it is, all right. Hogan, we've got to celebrate. Tell the cook to break out a real feed. I'll be back in a minute. Right. See there, Mabel? That means an extra fish for you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Walker. Can I reach Seattle on this thing? You can if they haven't moved it, sir. We were talking with them a few minutes ago. Good. NRNQ calling NOQ. NRNQ calling NOQ. NOQ answering NRNQ. Go ahead. 13, 13, 13. 13, 13. We'll dock Saturday, 2.30. Breakers ahead. That is all. What's all that 13, 13, 13 business? I never heard that before. That's Mr. Randall's private signal to disregard the message officially. Why? Did you get that breakers ahead at the end? Yeah, but that... Well... His girl is an entertainer at the Breakers Cafe, and the message meant for me to phone and say he will be in Saturday at five bells. Strike up the van. <laughs> Gosh, it's good to see you. You better mean that. I've had a light in my window for 10 days, and that's devotion. I do mean it. Approve it? I'm going to pick you up tonight after the show, and we're really going to step. I wide and hat. Oh, Bob, I, I have to go out to Reggie Winton's shop tonight. He's sending a car to the club for me. Oh, call it off. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't. So I've been getting $50 for it. Well, $50 isn't parsley in any league. Pretty soon you won't have to sing anything but lullaby. And uh, just how am I to take that, Mr. Randall? Like this. Uh, uh, look. All right, all right, break out those swaps. Come on, lay all the boys. Let's shake them in. report to the old man tonight. I know he's going to hand me my promotion. Oh, Bob, that's wonderful. You said it. We're sitting on top of the world. I'm sorry, but your promotion didn't come through, Mr. Randall. But I... Yes, sir. I'm assigning Lieutenant Mays to command the Nile here. We'll be glad to welcome you aboard, sir. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Well, uh... Glad to see you back, Mr. Randall. That'll be all. Yes, sir. With your permission, sir? So that's the famous Bob Randall. Well, I must say he can take it. If I had made the Niobe the best boat in the fleet and deserved a commission like he does, I'd resent somebody else taking command. Well, if Boatswain Randall ever resents anything, you'll never know it. He took her to sailor. 
I suppose you know by now, Dad, that I'm not so keen on this sea duty. It was those two years at Pensacola that saved me. Up there in the air, it was great. I could do loops, barrel rolls, tailspins, wingovers, dives, anything. But when I have to be on the water, especially rough water, I... What is it, son? Same old trouble? Yes, sir. That's why I had you transferred up here. I thought we could work it out together. You know I'll try, Dad. I'm sure of it. And just remember, you'll have the wholehearted support of the best boatswain in the service. That's swell. You have to move out of the skipper's cabin to make way for the old man's kid. I bet he don't know enough to pour water out of a boot. Oh, pipe down. The boy's all right. Then he's four years at the academy. Yeah. He's got four years theory, and you've got 12 years practical experience. I wouldn't mind so much if he was a two-striper, but a junior lieutenant. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Mays. Yes, sir. Where's Mr. Randall? He's in his cabin, sir. I'll show you. Never mind, I'll find him. Uh, please see that my baggage gets aboard. Yes, sir. They're all alike. Long on salutes and short on horses. And that goes for all junior grades. I never saw one yet that was worth the room he takes up. Excuse me, sir. Just moving my stuff out, sir. I'm sorry to dispossess you. Well, that's all right. It's comfortable below. It has its advantages. You can blow off steam down there without being overheard. Yes, sir. Now you'll cancel all liberty and make arrangements to load stores immediately. We're shoving off at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. That'll be all, Mr. Randall. Holy mackerel, he was right at the door when I stepped out. Shut up. Get all hands busy. We're shoving off at 7 in the morning. But I've got... But nothing. Do as you're told. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to go tell Connie goodbye. Yes, sir. I bet we're going to have a lot of fun on this trip. Here, Mr. Wenton. Where'd you pick her up? Oh, I found her in my stocking one Christmas morning. You like her? She's lovely. Good. I'll send it around in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> You know Connie Dawson? This is Phil Morgan, Connie. How do you do, Miss Dawson? How are you, Mr. Morgan? You were at the club the other night with Reggie, weren't you? Yes. Oh, she remembers. You're lucky, Phil. I was there a dozen times before she even saw me. Oh, no. I remember the first time you came. You insisted on doing a rumba with the head waiter. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you like that? A rumba with the head waiter. Well, speaking of rumbas, let's get at it. Thank you, Phil. Excuse us. See you later. Get it. <laughs> Nothing against watching you do your work, is there? Not at all. After you do yours. Would you come with me, sir? Something rather important. Will you excuse me? Of course. I'll get ready for another number. Oh, that's fine. Well, what is it, Stuart? What is it? Something in the hole, well, sir. Well, let's see it. Indeed. Come in. I really meant that to see you later. I didn't realize it'd be so soon. Ah. There's no real reason to hurry away, is there? Well, there's the rest of the party. Why, have I forgotten something? Nothing. Except eight or ten more people. I was hired to entertain, you know. You were. But never let it be said that Phil Morgan didn't do his share. This is all very silly. I 
don't want to act like a child, but... Well, of course, if you insist, there's always the piano. What would you like to hear? Well, that opens up a wide field. Suppose you let me do the entertaining for a while. I'm afraid your ideas of entertainment don't agree with mine. Please, Mr. Morgan, you make it very embarrassing for me. I'm on board as a paid entertainer to play or sing. As far as anything else is concerned, I'm, I'm book solid. Well, I'm not. This is my time to play. I think you'd be a charming playmate. Phil, look. Look what I found. Seal skins. And the hold is full of them. Better notify the police. Take it easy, Reggie. But the stuff is dynamite. How did it get on the boat, anyhow? Well, if you'll be quiet, I'll explain. Explain? What do you know about this? They'll be unloaded tonight. I'll tell you the whole story. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, so you did this. And that's why you had me get rid of my crew. Please don't yell. Don't yell? You pose as my friend. You use my yacht to cover up a thing like this. And then you tell me don't yell. Keep this mug quiet. How long will it take you to get unloaded? About 20 minutes. All right, get started. Okay, but this guy keeps quiet. Say, whose yacht is this? If you think I'm gonna... Shut up, sucker. Listen, Reggie, I don't wanna see you get fat. You're drunk. I'm not drunk. But I'll tell you what I am. I'm a sucker for a couple of cheap crooks. All right, skip that. Those skins are worth a quarter of a million dollars. We were gonna take care of you. <laughs> take care of me. I'm gonna send a radio to the police right now. You can't take care of me. Oh, can't we? What was that? It sounds like a shot. Sounds like trouble. You better take a look, Hap. Came from one of the cabins. It's probably Reggie opening another bottle. <laughs> well, you took care of him, all right. I had to. That radio had the Coast Guard down us like a swarm of hornets. Don't let's have any trouble with you. Who is it? It's me, Hap. Had an accident, Hap. Get up on deck and keep everybody away until we get out of here. Right. What about the dame? Bring her along. Better let her have it. It's on the house. I said bring her along and keep her quiet. She'll be quiet, all right. Let's go below and help Reggie celebrate. That's yeah. a good idea. Where was you going, folks? We were looking for Mr. Winton. Yeah? Well, I wouldn't look down there. Then it was a shot we heard. Yes, my gun went off accidentally. It might happen again any time. Just go on with your party. Jack? Yes, sir. And will you please come below? We've had an accident. What's happened? Mr. Whitten has been shot. And they left in the speedboat a few minutes before you arrived, sir. Where's Miss Dawson? They've taken her with them. Radio operator? Yes, sir. Notify shore police at once, then stand by. Yes, Everybody else on deck. Steward, see that no one leaves the yacht. Right, sir. Bob Randall of the patrol boat Niobe was the first to arrive at the scene of the crime, upholding the best traditions of the Coast Guard by his prompt and efficient action. Here he comes now. Boy, are you lucky. Be absent all night with a speedboat and end up a hero. Listen to this. An all-night search by local police and Coast Guardsmen failed to reveal any trace of the men who disappeared from the yacht, but the police expect an arrest within 24 hours. I'm not waiting for the police. I gotta find them. You've got to get some sleep. We're going to shove off in a few minutes. You're shoving off. I'm staying here.
morning, Mr. Randall. Something on your mind? Yes, sir. I'd like permission to remain ashore. That would have to be done through the base commander. We're shoving off in a few minutes. Couldn't I get the commander on the phone? You see, Connie Dawson and I were... Well, I've got to find her. You understand, sir. I understand that the police are doing everything possible. But this isn't just any girl, sir. It's my girl. And this is my ship. Your post. You must remember that this is my first patrol and that you are thoroughly familiar with the ship and the waters through which she traveled. Well, Hogan's been with me for six years. He I'm knows... sorry, Mr. Randall, but I'm afraid I'll have to refuse. Now, prepare to get underway. Aye, aye sir. We have a good description of the girl, but nobody remembers much about the men. However, we have every avenue of escape blocked ashore. And if the Coast Guard will watch things afloat, we'll have them bottled up. I hope so. You want the murderers, and we want the poachers. As they seem to be the same persons, I can assure you of our full cooperation. Thank you, Commander. Yes, sir. General Broadcast, to all patrol boat commanders, you are ordered to overtake and investigate all craft operating in these waters? For the purpose of preventing the escape of two unidentified men who kidnapped Connie Dawson from the yacht Hermitage. Connie Dawson is about 22. Five feet, four inches tall, light hair. Apprehend and hold for questioning any suspicious persons answering these descriptions. Can we make full speed, sir? All right, Mr. Randall. Thank you, sir. What do you do in a case like that? Well, you could build a fire under, but right now you better get up on deck until we see what's in that schooner ahead. Another one? That makes ten in three days. I haven't done anything but climb in and out of scow since I left Seattle. Somebody's gonna think you mean all this belly aching someday, and then you will be in a jam. See there, Mabel? That's what love does to you. Uh, Chief. Yes, sir. What is it? What's in there? Why, there's a little fishing village back in that cove. And you see that rock? Yeah, looks like a hunk of ice cream on a piece of pie. That's why we call it Pie Alamode Rock. Huh? What do you make of her, Mr. Randall? She can out of Juno. <laughs> Coast Guard! Men, stop! Yes, we saw her, Johnny. Perhaps you better stop. Sure. You know her? Yes, sir. She's probably full of salmon. Well, then let her go. There can't be anything wrong with a little boat like that. Those are orders, sir. Stop all boats. Very good, Mr. Randall. Get a boat away. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster, clear away a surf boat. Aye, sir. Now remember, young lady, Nick will be under the bunk with a gun at your back. And I'll be in the closet ready to shoot the first man who comes in that door. So you've got nothing to do but be quiet. You try your best to look innocent. Get me? Sure. Me got you. Lieutenant Mays and boarding party. Coast Guard patrol boat, Niobe. You, Lieutenant? Me, Captain Johnny. All right, Captain. We won't hold you long. Let me see your papers. Okay, Lieutenant. Make a search, Mr. Randall. Aye, right, sir. Hogan, come with me. Yes, sir. Back to cargo. Yes, sir.
nothing there but fish, sir. How do you know it's fish all the way down? Yes, sir. Please, please, you're not going. Johnny Hopscotch is in very bad fix. What's the trouble? You see, that's why I hurry back to Juno. Congratulations, Captain. Thank you, thank you. All right, Captain, I won't hold you up any longer. Thank you. Please, no going. Why not? Because. I'm bad fixed. Oh, that's all right. I won't hurt anything. I've inspected the cabin, Mr. Randall. Yes, sir. We'll return to the boat. All right. It was fish, sir. So I gather. Back to the ship. You're getting a little sense. All right, Johnny, get on the way again. Make as much speed as you can. Okay. <laughs> Can't fool a seal. Mabel thinks you're a two-legged fish. You better burn those clothes, Hogan. <laughs> now, Mabel, look out. Hold her. Hold her. Get him, Mabel. Get him, Mabel. What is it, Mr. Randall? I just read this entry you made in the log, sir. You mean there was a woman on that boat and you didn't... The captain's wife, Mr. Randall. Well, and under the circumstances, I didn't think it was the duty of the Coast Guard to interfere. But a woman on a... That's all, Mr. Randall. The incident is closed. Yes, sir. gives us a lot of information. Nobody can pronounce his right name. He's your writer. He's your writer, sir. That's a seal rookery. You may have seen something worthwhile. Steady as you go. Steady as you go, sir. I'll go ashore and question him. You better take me along, sir. I don't think you'll understand his lingo. Very well. Have Hogan take the deck and call away the surfboard. Aye, aye, sir. Stop both engines. Stop both engines, sir.
happened to the skipper? I don't know, but Mr. Randall could have brought us through that surf in the wash tub. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Randall. I, I'm all right now. Yes, sir. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Don't mind that, sir. These fellas are always giggling. Atta. You car a tanga kayak. Match could look tat. He says he always told me that his kayak was better than our surfboat, sir. Kayak? Yes, sir. Skin canoe, the Eskimo shoes. All right, let's get on with this business. We're all soaked. So, yeah. Ooh, ya, om kinoni, it numa. Kin, kin ya, akimamik, it nimi. He says he saw 15 or 20 seal poachers come ashore and slaughter the seal herd on the island. Huh. Left about two hours before we were sighted. You seem to have done a pretty thorough job. Yes, sir. It's particularly bad this time of year. When they kill a mother, they kill three seals. The mother, the pup who dies of starvation, an unborn baby. Hmm. Well, get all the details you can, Mr. Randall. We're going back to the boat before the men freeze to death. Oh, I wouldn't worry about them, sir. I could use some of that fire myself. No, I can't. Some cook nummy. What's he saying? He wants to know if you brought him his bottle, sir. Bottles? Yes, sir. We always bring him one. It's in the boat box. Ami. Hi, you oil. <laughs> you some of the bottles? How's the family? You mean to say he drinks this? He loves it, sir. That's why we call him oil. <laughs> well, everybody to his own taste. Let's go back, Mr. Randall. Yes, sir. Stand the boat. course for the base, Mr. Randall. I'll be in my cabin. Aye, aye, sir. Hello, hero. What do you mean, hero? I saw you and the lieutenant in the water. Oh, that. Uh, yeah, too bad. He was hit by an oar. Yeah? He wasn't within 50 feet of an oar. I had the glasses on you all the time. Like coming back in the boat. I said he was hit by an oar. Yes, sir. That's what I said. Hit by an oar. A fine sailor you are. When I found myself in the rough water, why, I went panicky. Luckily, Randall was there, or the whole crew would have seen it. What did he have to say? Nothing, but he must have seen. Oh, it was horrible. I, I just can't do it. I've tried, but it's too much for me. Don't keep me at it until I disgrace you as well as myself. All right, son. But I did want you up here with me in the north. I can be with you, Dad. You have planes here. And nothing would suit me better than to thumb my nose at those Alaskan waters while flying above them looking for seal poachers. Hogan! Oh, Hogan! What are you yelling about? I can hear you. Is Bill Bates on that floating palace of yours? He is. And don't be leaning over too far. You might upset that thing. Yeah? Well, I'd be in a great spot with nobody to help me but you. And no cracks about my boat. Read and what? This 75 footer is the smoothest thing in the fleet. Yeah? How do you make it go? With an outboard motor? <laughs> when we left here, Connie was in all the headlines. 
And now, just ten days later, I had to speak to four guys in the district attorney's office before I could find one that knew what I was talking about. Tom? Message for you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Report to Commander May's office at once. This may be something. Well, I hope so. Then nothing unusual happened, Mr. Anlow. Nothing, sir. Didn't the surf boat turn over? Oh, uh, yes, sir. That's liable to happen any time. Did it ever happen to you? No, sir. I've been lucky. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Do you know what a phobia is? Phobia? Some kind of fear, isn't it, sir? Yes. Deadly, gripping fear. Well, my son has had a phobia of the water ever since he was a child. They were on the way to visit me, he and his mother. The ship ran into a storm and a schooner rammed them amidship. My wife was a good swimmer, but she never had a chance in that rough sea. She held Ralph up as long as she could and then managed to get him on a piece of hatch cover before she... My ship was one of those that went to the rescue. It's a terrible experience for anyone, especially a boy of six. Stamped a picture on his mind he's never been able to erase. That's why when the water's rough, he, he goes to pieces. I'm sorry, sir. I'm telling you this, Mr. Randall, because you were on that patrol with him and know what he must have gone through. I didn't understand, sir. Lieutenant Mays has been transferred to the air service at his own request. You are again in command of the Niobe and will resume your regular patrol. Yes, sir. Was there something else, Mr. Randall? Yes, sir. What is it? I don't wish to be disrespectful, sir, but I'm wondering if there isn't another way to get at these seal poachers. What would you suggest? Well, sir, when we make our regular patrols, they always know way ahead of time that we're coming. Well, that's true, but with the thousands of miles we have to patrol and the few men we have to do it with... That's just it, sir. They must have a hideout. I'd like to go up there and find it. And there's always the possibility that you may find Miss Dawson. Yes, sir. Did you intend to go alone? I'd like to take one man, sir. Hogan, I suppose. We've been shipmates for years. Very well, Mr. Randall. You and Hogan consider yourselves on independent duty for 30 days. Call on me for any help you may need in preparation, but shove off on your own. Yes, sir. Good luck, son. Thank you, sir. stuff they confiscated on the yacht. That ought to be the right flavor. What'll I do with them? Hide them. Hide them? Yeah, I hope the right man finds them. Aye, aye, sir. I mean, okay, buddy. every port on the way up. So far, we haven't met anybody that looks like they've ever heard of a seal. NVMZZ calling an OQ. NVMZZ calling an OQ. Lieutenant Mays speaking. It's the kid. An OQ answering NVMZZ. Go ahead. I'm nearing the southern end of Francis Island. Having engine trouble. He isn't far from here. Fish 
fishing boat in the harbor. I'm going down for help. Fishing boat? In that harbor? That's seal country. Nobody fishes up there. I don't like it. We're nearer than any patrol boat. Get on that engine and nurse it. Let's see how fast we can get to Francis Island. All right. Coast Guard. Yeah. What's he doing way out here? Oh, I don't know. He'll fly around a while and be on his way. Looks to me like he's flying off alone. That. A Coast Guard plane lands right in our lap. We'd better pick him up. Yeah. Now that he's here, he's safer with us than running around loose. We don't find any wreckage. Maybe he fixed the engine and went on his way. No, he'd have reported if he was out of trouble. Let's take a look ashore. Search every cove and back bay in these waters. There's an old pal. Old Pie Alamo Rock. I wished I had a dollar for every recruit that asked how to keep the top flight. Yeah. Wait a minute. There's a boat. Where? There, passing the rock. Yeah, I see it now. What do you make of it? A lot of speed. There's two men in here. Here, take a look. Do you see what I see? Johnny Hopscotch. And he's heading into the harbor. I'm going to follow him in. How soon can you have the boat here? Oh, five days, six days. Make it four days, five days, and it's a deal. Okay, four, five days. That a boy. I'll check with the boss. Careful. They've probably been watching us from the time we headed in. Ever see her before? Nope. Lookout picked her up a half hour ago. Yeah. You better go down there and find out what it's all about. Hello. How are you? Engine trouble? Nope. Business. What kind? We're trying to. We got to get supplies. Enough to last a couple of months. Sure. I'll introduce you to the storekeeper. Come on.
First trip? No, we uh, Yeah. First trip. Going far? That depends. Okay, buddy. I know how it is. Are you sure? Sure, me sure. All right, Johnny. Thanks. Fine skin. How many did you say you have? How many did you say you could use? <laughs> I think we can do business. You boys stay and have dinner and we'll talk it over. Or are you in too much of a hurry? Oh, we're in a hurry, all right, but uh, we've got to have supplies. Well, you make out a list of what you want. My man will figure the price. Take care of the boys, Nick. I'll be down in a minute. Leave it to me. Great layout, eh, boys? All right. How about a little drink? Sure. That's what I call hospitality. Smile. Aren't you glad to see me? Did you expect me to be? Well, I'd hope that by now you'd be waiting breathlessly each time I return. You certainly know a lot about women. Do you think I'd do anything but detest you? After you kidnapped me, keep me a prisoner, spied on all this time? It would have all been so simple, my dear, if you'd only listened to reason. This is my private stamping ground. What I say goes here. There's only one thing lacking. I have no one to share it. Oh, forgive me. I hadn't meant to go into all that. Forgetting again. I want you to come down and meet a couple of friends of mine. Boss did every bit of that himself. What a job. You know, he doesn't look like a whittler. Well, you see, every man has to have a hobby, and that's his. Hopes. What puzzles me is how they get them in bottles. My dear, I want you to meet Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. This is Miss Brown, boys. How do you do, Miss Brown? How do you do? Nice place you have here, Mr. Morgan. Oh, the credit belongs to this brave little girl who's sharing my exile with me. And Nick, why don't you take Mr. Smith out for a walk? Good idea. Now we can get down to business. I'm thinking of taking Mr. Jones in with us. How do you like him, honey? You see, it's all up to the boss. If you're all right with her, you'll do for me. I think Mr. Jones could be very useful. There you are, Jones. You're all set. Now, here's the situation. We've got a lot of seal skins up here worth close to $2 million. And we haven't been able to move them. Now, I'm planning a good cleanup. And you're going to help me. Right? Right. That's the stuff. Now, if you'll excuse us, honey. I'll show Mr. Jones over the place. Down here is the storeroom, the vault for the skins. They certainly are well fixed. Uh, but you haven't seen the best part. Let's look in here. Randall. Lieutenant. me. Nick. Yeah? You go away. Why you no take me? I tell you, it can't be done. But, Marie, she been good girl. You, you promise marry me. Sure you've been a good girl and I like you. But forget it. And of course, Johnny Hopscotch recognized him the minute he stepped ashore. But I had no idea that you'd know him. Know him? I love him. We're going to be married. You were going to be married. You wouldn't dare harm him. You couldn't be so stupid. Our back of those men is the whole Coast Guard. 
Don't you see that it can only end one way for you? I see that you don't know me, my dear. You ought to get a look at that map of yours. That Nick certainly did an artistic job on you. Yeah, Nick and four others. Right. At least you're feeling better. Yeah. Uh-huh. Say, I wonder what they're doing with the kid. I don't know. He told me they'd been treating him pretty good. All right. You're next. for anything else you're going to ask. You big outdoor men are so blunt. However, we do want something. Something we know that we can persuade you to do for us. Like you persuaded young Mays. Yes, I'm sorry about that. But the lieutenant was obstinate. The boys were overzealous. Well, what makes you think I won't be just as obstinate? Because of the fact that Miss Brown is also a prisoner here. You two are in love, she tells me. Let me get this straight. You want something from me. If you don't get it, you're going to take it out on the girl. Is that right? Right. I believe you would at that. I told you last night that the skins on hand were worth two million dollars. Does Connie know about this? Not yet. I thought you and I could get together and save a lot of unnecessary heroics. What is it you want? It's better. Look here. Here's where we are. There's our market. In between is the Coast Guard. We want you to decoy the Coast Guard somewhere off here, say Cape Fear. How do you figure I can do that? By sending a message that you've located us in great strength off Cape Fear. Why don't you send the message yourself? Because we don't know the code signal that would make it authentic. Well, how do I know that Connie and the others will be safe if I do send the message? I'm afraid you'll have to take my word for that. Okay. Where's the wireless? I thought you'd see it my way. All right, Nick. Come with me. I'm not so sure I can reach them, but we're sure you can try. Hop to it. And no monkey business. NVMZZ calling NOQ. NVMZZ calling NOQ. NVMZZ? Well, that's Lieutenant Mays. Jumping Jupiter. NVMZZ calling NOQ. NOQ answering NVMZZ. NOQ answering NVMZZ. Go ahead. 13, 13, 13. What does that 13, 13, 13 mean? Well, that's what makes it official. Mm. I've located Poacher's Hideout, southern end of Cape Pierre Island. Strongly fortified. Expect resistance. Send all available boats. Randall speaking. Wait a minute, Mr. Randall. Are you in any danger? No. Everything's pile of mold. Well, that's the last message that'll go over this. Thank you, Mr. Randall. You've done us a great service. The 131313 13, 13 is his private signal to disregard. But I can't figure why he should give it to me on that. You sound pathetic. Say anything else? Nothing that meant anything, sir. I asked him if he was in any danger, and he said no. 
Everything is pie a la mode. <laughs> Mr. Randall's always clowning, sir. Mm. Well, let me see. You found me, is forced down here. Now, Randall reports the poachers way over here. They must have been operating far from their base. What's the nearest point to here where the plane came down? Pretty barren country, sir. There's a little fishing village here, hidden in this cove. What's this? Pi Alamo. Sure, that's it. That rock. That's what he meant. He said everything is Pi Alamo. That's what the men call that rock on account. That's right, sir. Very good. Lieutenant, order the Mount Pesson to Cape Pierre and every other Coast Guard vessel in those waters to concentrate at once at Pi Alamo Rock. Where's the Cassandra? That's Harbor, sir. Good. Order her to wait my arrival. I'm flying up at once to take command. Aye, aye, sir. The guy that worked on this side must have had a horseshoe in his fist. I wouldn't know. After the first ten punches, I drew a blank. But the practicing they done on us, they ought to do a good job on Bob. I'll bet he goes down swinging. Here? Say, I bet he slaps that Mick dizzy. I remember one night in Catch a Can, there was... There were six of them. Oh. You sent that message. Yes. You took the easy way. You, the game guy, the man my father held up to me as a model. You're not afraid of the water. No, but you are afraid of a little beating. Look, Hogan, there's your champion. He hasn't got a mark on him, has he? Well, he will have. How did it go, Chuck? Quiet as a church. You'll be loaded in a few hours, then we vamoose. Well, I'll be glad. It's kind of lonesome around here. Keep your eyes open. We don't want no last minute slip ups. Nothing's going to happen, Louie. Murray, what's happening? Whose boat is that? And where is it going? And where is Mr. Randall and the others? What have they done with them? Marie, please, please tell me. <laughs> hey, hey, and Marie, what you gonna do with her? Well, I'll tell you, Johnny. If you're a good boy, I might leave her on your boat. Something's doing all right. 
Right. Hopping around like jackrabbits. What do you make of it? I don't know, unless... Come on, you guys. Post car. Work. Work. <laughs> Randall. Yes, sir. I was a fool. I'm sorry. Forget it, sir. I wasn't sure myself. But I was. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure. Audley? Yes, sir? Signal all ships to send landing parties at full strength. Signal all ships to send landing parties at full strength, sir. I just wanted you to know how smart you are. The entrance to that harbor is mine. We had intended them for hijacking, but they do just as well for your friends on those boats out there. So every time you hear a mine go off, you'll know that a load of your friends have been blown up just because you had to be clever. Nick, you better stay with the boy, just in case. I'm sure you gentlemen will excuse me, but I'm the reception committee. See, mister, you had not have sent that phony message. It just makes trouble for everybody. to stand in line to do that, sister. Now, where's that mind control? Me, Ted. Where is it? In-house. Next big totem pole. Get Miss Dawson and bring her here. There's some hand bombs in the plane. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Come on, Hogan. the point. That means the landing party must be getting close. We'd better get a wiggle on. Well, here we go. Ready with your mind, stuff? Ready, my boy. I've been ready for months. Good. Gotta get close enough to let him have one of these eggplants. I'm gonna make a run for it. Right, I'll cover you. Are they near their position? I want to see my pitch wait. Leading boat is almost on the mark. All ships cover the landing force with gunfire. All ships cover the landing force with gunfire, sir.
Charlie? Sure pitched to strike that time, fella. Yeah, that one retired the side. <laughs> Looks like that commission is a cinch now. Well, that ought to be yours. Ah, forget it. I'm just a mug. Bosun's made. Yes, sir. Here the quarterback. Aye, aye, sir. Thank <laughs> you.